Okay, um, here it is. Please don't laugh. Oh my god. What the fuck is... Oh, ah, uh, 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 mm -mm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. How is it going ladies and gentlemen? My name is Mr. Wanty Burnett himself and yeah, we're back with some more Cobacon Academy goodness. With some more Pokemon Academy life adventure for your eye holes to take in. Uh, last time we decided to turn down Clara and had the long awaited date with Leaf that I know a lot of you have been waiting for so so patiently and a lot of you not so patiently, but we are back here again and we're going to see what life is like post date. So let's just get back into it, shall we? Good morning, class. In a departure from my traditional identity as Professor Oak, let me be frank. That is one of the worst dad jokes I've ever heard in my life and I love it. <laughs> well, I thought it was funny. In any case, your test this evening is not a simple one. However, I fully expect a resounding success is within the abilities of each and every one of you. This test will require you to understand the properties of the move Camouflage and how it interacts with terrains. It is not, I warrant, an overly popular move, but it is one every student should know, as there is rarely a better way to make use of your surroundings. There are four common types of terrain. Misty, Grassy, Psychic, and Electric. What about Burial Ground? Instructor in Bertha invented that one. She did, and it's a marvelously clever move that assists both Ghost types and Ground types, and to a lesser extent, flying and levitating Pokémon. However, you are unlikely to see that move in the wild, unless it's being used by someone who had the pleasure of being taught directly by Bertha. That being said, I do believe the champion Cynthia was taught by Instructor Bertha, and I think her Spiritomb is a known user of the move. Hmm. Something to keep in mind for the ambitious amongst you. However, this test will not cover that material. Now, Misty Terrain halves the power of Dragon type moves and is used largely by Fairy types. Grassy Terrain, perhaps unsurprisingly, increases the power of Grass type moves. And I trust in your intelligence to know which type psychic and electric terrains boost. Now these moves do have other effects, but our interest here is in how Camouflage's effect changes when used on these terrains. You see, Camouflage changes the type of the user depending on their surroundings. In a forest, you are liable to turn into a bug type. In a field, a grass type. In Instructor Melody's fr Melanie? Is it Melanie or Melody? It's Melanie. Yeah, okay. In Instructor Melanie's frigid classroom, well, an ice type seems a reasonable choice for camouflage. This effect is altered by terrains, which take priority over whatever one's actual environs are. I again trust in your intelligence to realize which type each terrain shifts the effect of camouflage toward. Oh, actually. Apologies, students. I told you to disregard the effects of the terrains themselves earlier, but it's somewhat important to remember that psychic terrain makes grounded Pokémon immune to priority moves. Do keep that in mind. Uh, off the top of my head, uh, grassy terrain increases, well, restores a leftovers amount of health each turn. Uh, psychic terrain obviously blocks the effects of priority moves. Misty terrain means that grounded Pokémon cannot be statused and electric terrain stops grounded Pokemon from being able to fall asleep. I believe that's all of their intended effects. There may be some others, but I think those are the only ones. There are various other mechanisms that interact with terrains, seeds and extenders, for example, but I'd rather not confuse the issue. Right then, let's quickly ensure that you are listening. Miss Milton, you ought to know this. Uh-huh. Of the terrains I mentioned, which one does not boost the power of moves of the corresponding type used on it? Misty Terrain! Shoot! I was too surprised he was actually teaching. I kinda zoned out. Uh, Flan? Not a chance. Looks like Whitney could use some help. Psst! Please, Aunt Alex? Misty Terrain. Oak nods. Quite right, Miss Milton. It is a curious move, being one that halves the damage of Dragon-type moves, even though it's primarily learned by Pokémon entirely immune to Dragon-type moves. 
but even such a contradictory move has its uses. Thanks a bunch. Anytime. Now let's move on. I wish to make clear how terrains can be set up and removed. The traditional methodology is to use the moves that share the terrain's names. However, there are various other methods. I will go into more detail later. Professor Oak lectures on the interaction of terrain setting moves, terrain setting abilities, and camouflage at length. His teaching style has not noticeably changed, but the information being imparted seems much more useful now at least. So I'm not going to learn about the Galarian Kings and the history of, like, fire-type trainers anymore. I liked the lore-building aspect! <laughs> no, I, I yeah, I, I liked I liked both of it. Uh, I think we're going to do something a little bit different today. Chiggery, I notice, is lagging behind somewhat. And I think it might be a good idea to start doing uh, bug and ghost-type electives at some point. Because I do have this Burnett chilling in the back that I really, really want to add to my team. And I want to get rid of Brutus because... I'm sorry, Brutus, you're crap. Uh, you've got good EXP, but you're still crap. Uh, so, yeah, I'm thinking... Today we'll switch it up and we'll go see Berg. Let's go see Berg. You only just stepped into the classroom when... Alex! Oh, God. Oh, hey, Clara. You're in this class too? I've been to this class pretty often, but I guess I've never noticed. Oh, you didn't notice me? That makes me a bit sad. But it's alright. I forgive you. I noticed you, but I don't understand you've got a lot going on. Anyway, of course I'd be in this class. Bug is my absolute favourite type of all time. No, it's not. That's cool. Plus, Instructor Berg is such a great artist. I'm a massive fan of his work. Really? You're the artsy type? Oh, well, I'm, I'm not any good, but every, I think everyone's an artist deep inside. I don't brag about it like some people, because I think art should just be used to make people happy, not for personal glory, you know? Unfortunately, not everyone thinks that way. Clara takes a quick look over at another student, which you realise with a start is Melody. Oh, she's also in this class. And she's sitting on the desk again. I heard she's in this class because she thinks it'll be an easy A. She'll be pretty disappointed when she finds out her usual strategy won't work. Huh? What do you mean? Oh, don't make me say it. It's embarrassing, but like, Instructor Berg is totally married, you know? No luck there, Melody. Sorry. Wait, you don't mean she... That's just what I've heard. Uh, I don't think I, I believe it. I see the best in everyone. But a lot of other people have been saying it. Jeez. I hope she doesn't make class difficult then. Well, if she does, you can just sit with me. There's no need to think about her when I'm here, no matter what she does. Thanks. I'll keep that in mind. Let me just talk to Ethan for a sec. Of course. Don't leave me waiting, though. Damn. Well, Ethan, you alright? What? Oh, do I look tired? Yeah, man, I'm fine. Yep, you look very tired. Stop playing games all night. What do you want, Berg? Alex? Yeah? I'm impressed by your advancements in this class so far. Oh, no. It looks like you're really discovering your voice. Thanks. No, thank you. I really appreciate having a student so committed to- What was his voice? What did I give him? I did his class like 20 times and then I just, like, deft him off. I can't remember what I- I, ca I can't remember for the life of me what I did for his voice. No, thank you. I really appreciate having a student so committed to the bug type. Does that mean I get to take another advancement exam? Yes, I think it does. If you pass this exam, I'll teach you how to grind up silver powder made from shred chrysalises, which boosts the power of your bug type moves by 10%. Tell me when you're ready. Oh, I'm definitely ready now. Well, we'll see. Which Pokemon will be using against me? I'll be using a single bug type. Chiggery. Alright, Chiggery. Alright, let's see your style then. Show me what you got. You got a Swadloon. Okay, I can't just Fury Cutter through it. No, I can't. Okay, well, you're doing nothing. Easy. Easy! Get out of my face. It looks like your masterpiece is really starting to take form. 
<laughs> I'm excited to see where your brush strays next. Here, take this. Maybe it'll provide some inspiration for your next work. Silver pa- ah, You gained a silver powder. It tickles your nose a little bit. Uh, you shouldn't be sniffing that. That's that, that's not good. And Berg, I, I, I don't think you should be giving that out in class. That's highly inappropriate and probably a bit illegal. Silver powder is known by uh, many other names. Uh, <laughs> none of which I can say in this YouTube video because it will get me demonetized. But uh, if, if you know, you know. <laughs> but for now, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go to the bag. We're going to get that. Well, I've got fast food. Never mind. Uh, battle items. We'll give the silver powder to Chiggery. Chiggery can have a little bit of a power boost. Yeah. Th that was genuinely unintended, but we got some new content out of that. So, cool. You are listening intently to the lecture when suddenly... Psst. Huh? What is it? I'm calling in that favor you owe me. Already? Jeez. All right, what is it? Uh, Ethan and Yellow are pissed at me. Huh? Them? No way. I thought he was being sarcastic, but he's being serious. Let me try that again with different in different tone. Huh? Them? No way. I mean, I don't really know Yellow as well as you do, but she always seems so gentle. And I'm pretty sure Ethan doesn't ever get angry. You're wrong. Just that. You're wrong. No insults, no sarcasm. Maybe this is real, then. Okay, assuming they really are angry at you, then. Why? And how do I fit into this? So my Eevee can make those foreverals, right? But they're based on bonds or understanding or whatever. So Ethan and I were having a conversation. Like, a good one. No screaming. And I kind of started to get him a bit more. But then Eevee threw up those stones, and now Ethan and Yellow both think I was just trying to get the damn stones. And I mean, I am, but not then. And not with him. So I need you to explain what's what to them. Dude, this is your problem. Just tell them the truth, and... I did! And they didn't believe me! Can you believe that? I... can't. Which is the problem, I guess. Alright, I can't promise anything, but I'll talk to them after school. Do you know where they'll be? They've been spending a lot of time alone together. Just in the dorm, though. Alright. But again, I can't promise anything. Day fucking. Day fucking. <laughs> uh, thanks. Blue quickly walks away, as Alda finishes lecturing. Huh. Ethan and Yellow, huh? I didn't think it should be too hard to explain to them what- uh, I don't think it should be too hard to explain to them what's really happening. Oh. I wonder if that's why Blue hasn't been around for lunch these past couple days. And that's it for today. Ah! My throat's sore. I need some water. If I'm gonna be talking for so- uh, I need some water if I'm gonna be talking for so long. Ha! Huh. Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> okay. Bruno, who are our battlers for today? Alex, you're going to be matched up against Bianca. Which one? That's Tia. <laughs> Hi, Alex. Hey. You look like you were having a lot of fun in that coordinator club meeting on Tuesday. Thank you. Lysia is really knowledgeable, passionate about her work. I always thought that contests were more about having fun. But I'm doing my best. I really want to help her win the water uh, Kobukan Water Drop Festival thingy. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. I'm sure you'll do great. Now shall we bow? Let's bust this day's I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, where did you learn that? There is a person on the something who makes internet. <laughs> There's a person on the internet who makes really funny videos. What? What? What did she say? Let's bust this day's something. Heine? I, I, I don't know. That's that's a reference to someone. I, I don't get it. 
She says it a lot. You might not want to say that around people. Oh, but Whitney likes it when I say it. I think she should be monitoring your internet usage a bit more carefully. Oh no, she encourages me to the funny internet woman. <laughs> Whitney! <laughs> Great, then maybe I should be. You know, I'm not a kid. What? No, I, I know that. I wasn't saying you were. Okay. Let's battle then. Yeah, let's bust this guy's balls. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's go. Oh, she got a Galarian Mr. Mime. It's Ice and Psychic. Oh, it's Ardent Gaze. Wait. How does that know Ardent Gaze? Mr. Mime is... Galarian Mr. Mime is Ice Psychic. How has she got that to learn... Hmm. Interesting. Get out there, Ivy. Slow free... Ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Well. Oh, we got Beach Seed off. Nice. Let's go back out into Barrow, because we're still trying to level Barrow up. Slow freeze, nice. Well, bite it. Yeah, filter. Nice! Barrow leveled up, cool. Must have learned double team. I, I don't really want it in conjunction with... Uh... is a difficult one to think of a moveset for, because... I like in Shroud, but if I want to... And, and Shroud is nice in conjunction with Perish Song to a degree, but not, like, totally. Future Sight Perish Song is a bit... I think I'm fine without Double Team. I think in Shroud's good enough. For now, anyway. Right, bite this mother flipper. Yeah, easy. Noibat. Hmm. Yeah, we'll stay in. We'll stay in. Bite it twice. Get flinched. Yeah, Barrow's still got the upper hand. Apart from when this thing comes out. Go on, Ivy. And Drain and Kiss it. Get your health back. Swept. And we got the Liberation Limit up. Wow, you're so good at battling. I guess I have a lot to learn. You don't say. Even though you're a level 70 Latias, you could probably just send yourself out. Those were some good battles today. I'm confident that our leagues are in good hands with your students taking the reins. And that'll be all for today. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh. No event at lunch. Screw it. I'm going I'm going to go and sit with you again. Sit at the table. <laughs> God damn it. Right. Uh Social we got a silver scene and a dawn scene. Interesting. Some after school activity today could be fun. Oh, but I've got to speak to the, the dorm mates, haven't I? Who do I sit with then? Hmm. Probably Rosa? Let's go sit with Rosa again. I know she's got some scenes, so I'm going to go sit with Rosa at the famous table. Famous table. Let's go to the famous table. Study with Rosa. Teach me some more about bug types, because God knows Chiggery needs it. Yeah, bug proficiency is now 21. That is what we want. So we've done bug. The fairy level cap is 24, so these two can level up again. I think what I should probably be doing is alternating between dark and bug right now. But also, ghost class could be a good little way to go because I do eventually, as I say, want to get Wanzi back out the PC. And in preparation for that, I think I'm going to go do a ghost class. I don't get why my Pichu hasn't evolved yet. I mean, look at her. She's level freaking 21. Everyone goes at their own pace, you know? Everything can Oh god, this is why I stopped doing this class because I have to do French. Every thinking being carries a soul within. Surely this does not surprise you? Have your own souls not sensed those in your Pokémon? There is but one difference. 
When a Pokemon departs this world, only rarely does its soul linger. Perhaps they, better than ourselves, know how to accept the curtain's fall. Je suis désolé. I did not mean to lower your spirits, only to explain this. Do not fear. The Pumpkaboo and Phantom you see in the forest are almost certainly not the souls of grass Pokemon. Why, if anything, they are more likely to be the souls of human children. Oh, 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 oh. Fantina's explanation doesn't make anyone feel better. You're goddamn right about that. Great proficiency in freestyle for eight. That's what we want to see, baby. Hell yeah. Welcome back to class, ladies and gentlemen. Now, can anyone here quickly recap what I covered in this morning's lecture? Miss Green? You were talking about terrains and how they change camouflage. When using camouflage on active terrain, you change into the type of Pokémon that terrain helps. Quite right. Now, I've mentioned before how to create a terrain, but sometimes one does not want the battlefield to be altered. There are four ways of removing terrains that I recommend you brush up on. Okay. First, uh, Steel Roller is a 130 base power steel type move that uh, removes the effect of terrain but cannot be used unless there is a terrain up. The other way of removing terrain, is, uh, the other ways are to... Uh, how else do you remove a terrain? Does Rapid Spin remove terrain? I don't think it does. Defog removes terrain, uh, I believe. I'm trying to preempt the lecture here to show off my knowledge. Uh, so you've got Steel Roller, potentially Defog. Uh, what else is that? I think there's a move that's like Clear Floor or something. I can't remember the name of it, but there is a move that gets rid of any active terrains. Uh, and obviously you can just set your own terrain. Yeah, there you go. First method is simply overwriting the terrain with one of your own. If a misty terrain is currently in effect and a group key with the ability Grassy Surge come in, the terrain will be Ms. Moore? Oh, uh, leafy terrain. Wait, sorry, uh, got mixed up. Grassy. Grassy terrain. Correct! This may seem basic, but using terrain setting moves is the simplest way to get rid of a different terrain. Uh, terrains are very, very important to me personally because my first ever championship win in Generation 9, I used a terrain-based draft league team consisting of Rillaboom and Horlucha. And Horlucha, with a Grassy Seed and Unburden, actually got me the win in the finals. So yeah, terrains are something that I'm very passionate about in competitive play because they are very, very strong. It is not, however, the most common way terrains disappear. Terrains will, of their own accord, disappear after five standard turns. Or eight turns if... Mr. Von Schwarzdracken, please do not interrupt me. You are correct, but it is disrespectful to both me and your classmates to continually interrupt. Hmm. What Mr. Von Schwarzdracken says is correct. Terrains last for eight turns if the user is holding the Terrain Extender item. This is one of those items whose function is entirely apparent from the name, much more sensibly named than the Life Orb, which is an orb that removes life. But that's a lecture for the future, I suppose. Ah, now we've come to the crux of the matter. Please take notes on this. Exams are open book, so there's no reason not to, unless you're worried about carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, in which case, you should be quite thankful you are not in Professor Widow's class. His students go through pencils like they're eating them. But that won't be on the test. Uh, on the arm that I have my Mega Burnett tattoo, I actually have a surgery scar. I'm not going to hold it too close to the screen, but it's like right at the top of my wrist here. Uh, the reason I've got this is because I broke my wrist very, very severely uh, to a point where it was never going to heal naturally on its own. It was a very, very bad break. Uh, and in fact, it needed surgery on it. So that's the only time I've ever had surgery in a... They put me under anaesthetic for it, so that was not fun. Uh, but the reason I'm mentioning this uh, in relation to Oak's Carpal Tunnel Syndrome is as part of the healing process, I now continually have to deal with a very small amount of arthritis in my right wrist. So I get a lot of pain in this wrist now, which is one of the reasons why I can't do continually long recording sessions as much anymore. Uh, I used to be able to do two or three hours at a time. Now I have to stop and give my wrists some time to heal. In fact, sometimes you'll hear me going on the keyboard. Uh, that is because I can't click anymore and I need to give my hand a rest. So 
I know it shows up on recording, so I apologise that it, you know, it can just be a little bit off-putting to hear slam, slam, slam on the keyboards, but it is for a reason. It's just because this is causing me a bit of pain. I try not to show it because I'm an actor and I know how to hide my pain. Uh, but yeah, it, that's the reason why. The third and final way a terrain may be removed is through the use series of moves that explicitly perform that function. Oak takes a quick glance at his notes. You suddenly realise that Professor Oak has notes. For as long as you'd known him, he had never written down a plan. Wow, Professor Cherry really did a number on him. Ice Spinner! That's the other one! That's the other one! Oh god, it's, it's like the most common ice type move used now. That and Triple Axel, and Ice Beam of course, but yeah, everything randomly got Ice Spinner as coverage, and it just made, like, Draft League really irritating. Defog Ice Spinner Steel Roller. These moves will entirely remove any extant terrain without replacing it. They have other effects too, of course. Defog and Mortal Spin will remove hazards on your side of the field. Defog will extend the same courtesy to your opponents while removing any barriers in place. Light screen, reflect, that sort of thing. Steel Roller is a very powerful steel move, hitting well above the comparable Iron Head or Flash Cannon. That being said, it will can entirely fail if there's no active terrain on the field when used. One can see, then, how its large damage potential is mitigated by the logistics of sustaining an active terrain every time you want to use it. Ah, well, I believe that's the end of the lecture. You should now know everything you need to pass the upcoming test with flying colours. Of course, I have generally been advised to avoid teaching to the test, but I think at this point doing so may be for the best. On the subject of the test, there are three pieces of information you should remember. The first is that your opponent will exclusively attack your Kecleon, as long as it's able to. You must not let them. If your Kecleon takes a single point of damage, you cannot pass this exam. The second thing to remember is that almost all Pokémon on the field will be burned and equipped with an air balloon. I suppose it was very hot air. <laughs> Final thing is that your opponent will only use the following moves, Leech Seed, Dragon Claw, and Bullet Punch. It will be up to you to determine which opposing Pokémon will use which move, and then you will need to do uh, what you will need to do to counter it. Abilities are extremely important in this test. Before you commit to any moves, look over your Pokémon, and make sure you understand what their abilities do. If no one has any questions, then... then please take out your pencils. I know I need not to tell you this, but this will be graded. Okay, I'm actually concerned for this one, because there's a lot of information to remember. Gabite floats with air balloon. We're all air ballooned. Okay. Let's study what we've got. We've got an Impidimp that has Misty Terrain. A nasty Plot and Fire trick. So I think the first course of action is to go for... Well, does Impidimp have Prankster? It does. Okay. So first port call is to Camouflage and Misty Terrain. Yeah, cool! And then the Gabite dies to burn. Nice. Okay, well, the cool thing is, it doesn't really matter what I send out now, because these guys, uh, Grookey and uh, Indeedee, have a ability which will cause the terrain to automatically set. So, yeah. We'll set the grassy terrain. And a Tangler will switch in. Tangler floats with its air balloon. The grassy terrain heals all. Okay. So I can't let this thing take any damage. What does Grookey have? Discard, Taunt, Endure, Howl. So I can't let my Kecleon take any damage. What does he indeed have? Play nice, Baton Pass, Charm, Protect. My thought process is that this is going to go... Is, it will only use Leech Seed, Dragon Claw, and the other move. So this thing's going for Leech Seed. So I'm just going to Camouflage. And... Discard. It's not holding an item. Uh, replaces Fling. Huh. Endure, I guess? 
Yeah, okay, yeah. I was worried about that. Alright, so this thing... Yeah, 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 cool. This thing is gonna be, it's gonna go for bullet punch, which I have to now stop. Which I have with psychic terrain. So it's gonna go for bullet punch. Do I even, well, I need to camouflage, obviously. Um, and it's gonna die to burn. So I think I'm fine. Uh, I guess I'll go for charm. Yeah, easy. Okay, cool. Nice. <laughs> I was a bit worried about that one, but yeah, that was that actually got the old grey matter working a little bit. So cool. Old man Oak is just leafing through the tests. It's impossible to tell what he's thinking. Well, at least I'm confident in my score. Well, this is good to see. Hmm. Yes, Mr. Von Schwarzdrachen. Thank you for raising your hand. Uh, what is it? Can you provide specifics regarding our performance? How we did as a class? Well, I haven't fully graded them yet, but after a thorough glance, it appears that we may be doing better. Granted, we all have a ways to go, but this is a marked and objective sign of improvement. He says we. He's also learning, huh? Well, that's all the time we have for today's test. Thank you for your patience. Have a nice day. Aww. Are you going to talk to Ethan and Yellow now? Not right now. I've got some other stuff to do first, but before I go to bed today, don't worry. Fine. What's this about? You don't need to know. Look, if you don't tell her, I will. And wouldn't you rather tell the story from your point of view? Ugh, fine. Leaf, you're helping me train. I'll tell you then. Huh? Is this how Yellow feels? On the one hand, I totally don't want to do what he says, but now I'm curious about what's happening between you four. And I guess he's been training my Dratini for a while. This would be a good time to check in on him anyway. Sounds good. See you back at the dorm. Right. Well, we have some uh, some scenes to get through right now uh, that we didn't get a chance to do earlier. Uh, there's someone else as well, isn't there? We have someone else. I know we do. Yeah, Silver and Dawn. Where's Silver? Where is Silver? Oh, there he is, down in Pledge Hall. Who do we want to do, Silver or Dawn? I think we do Dawn. Oh, we've got Cooking Club still. Ooh. Access PC, yeah, let's find Dawn. Let's go find Dawn, yeah, why not? Oh, look at that. Look at that, that's so cute. That is a cute little outfit. Hmm, <laughs> hmm, hmm. Okay, that's enough, I think. Thanks. My arms are pretty sore. You know, when I said I was ready to be your muscle, you corrected me and said the word was muse. But I've spent so much time holding poses and flexing, I think being your muscle might have been more accurate. I don't think this sculpture should take too much longer. Great. That means I can see it, right? Yep, I think it's time. Uh, one second. You absent-mindedly massage your sore muscles as you wait for Dawn to come back. The two of you have settled into a familiar routine. Whenever you have some spare time, Dawn will find you, and you'll sneak off together for, to the ice-type classroom. You would then, Dawn would then ask you to strike a variety of poses for her, asking to hold particular positions for a while, whilst you transfer them to a sketch, which she then suspo uh, supposedly based her sculptures on. You had never been present for the actual carving of a sculpture, though. Dawn seemed to find the idea terrifying. You also wondered privately what the point of all the posing and flexing was, given that you had always stayed fully dressed throughout, all the, uh, throughout the process. This isn't necessarily something you were disappointed over, but it did raise questions. Some quirk of the artistic process, perhaps? Okay, um, here it is. Please don't laugh. Oh my god. What the fuck is oh ah uh, 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 mm -mm. dawn dawn okay God. What? 
What noise is that? Nothing. It, it's nothing. I, I... I... You think it's ridiculous. I wouldn't say ridiculous, but... What's wrong with it? I, I don't know how to say this, but my crotch has become a cube. My forearms disappeared, and I gained about 100 pounds of muscle. Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure I recognize this body. Sorry. It's very flattering, I'm just not sure it's uh, really me. If me is what you were going for, I mean. Yeah, I was. I'm sorry, I should have just asked you to take your shirt off, but it's a bit embarrassing. Most sculptors, painters, people like that, real artists, they work with new models for a long time before ever trying something like I did. They get used to seeing it, I mean. But I never got the chance to do that. All I've ever really learned, all I've really learned, I just learned from practice or the occasional video on the internet. Well, your Altaria sculpture was absolutely amazing. I guess it's not as embarrassing asking a Pokemon to undress. <laughs> on the bright side, it shouldn't be too hard to just shave away at the muscle and cube to just make it smaller. It would be a problem if you, would, if you had to make it bigger. Yeah, but I think I'm just going to put this in the freezer. <clears throat> to keep the Altaria company? Yep, we'll just let them chill out together. Ha! Huh. But, you know, if you wanted to do something more with these sculptures you spend so long on, then... Alex, I told you, I don't. We've talked about this. Yeah, I know. You don't want to transport them overseas, you don't want to submit them to anything in Innsbruck, and you don't want to bring them to Unova because... Because you know, an artist have never won anything in Unova since the Cold War. Right. But what if it wasn't necessarily a competition? I know you aren't great with crowds, or, uh, competition. I actually don't mind crowds. Huh? Really? When I was touring the Sinoan contest circuit, well, if I hadn't gotten used to crowds, I would have died. No, I'm actually more okay with crowds than one-on-one -on -one conversations. Like the one we're having? Like the one we're having. When it's a crowd, you what you say doesn't really matter, as long as you look like you're doing well, but when it's just one person, your words need to be perfect. Well, you're mixing your words up around me less. I hope that means you're feeling more comfortable. I hope so too. Um, and since we're talking about it, I guess I should probably mention I don't really mind competition either. Seriously? Man, I was just wrong on so many counts then. It's alright, I, I get why you'd think that. I don't mind competing. What I mind is having to compete. Feeling like I have to fulfill some sort of purpose, and that purpose is just to beat someone. I'd like to think that Arceus has more in store for me than just beating somebody up. Whether it's a contest, a battle, I guess an exhibit. Instructor Valerie says that nothing great was ever accomplished by someone who wasn't having fun. I'm not sure if that's completely true, but I know I'm not having fun when I have to do something. Even if it's something I normally enjoy doing. It's probably pretty weird, right? Nah, I think a lot of people feel like that. Duty's the death of love. Hmm? Something I read about. Last time we were here, you mentioned that you were pretty inspired by that Sinoan playwright, right? You even carved a scene from the Red Chain. I looked into his stories, and it was pretty heavy stuff. I kinda couldn't get through it. That line stuck with me, though. I really appreciate you listening to me when I hobby about my blabs. Aw, oh, that was almost a whole 15 minutes! Blab is definitely a new one, though. Not sure I've even heard you use that word before, never mind mess it up. That's a fun one. Careful. I can still decide to give your sculpture a silly nose. Noted. Or should I say nosed? Nosied. <laughs> ha! You and Dawn eventually get back into a casual conversation, and the topic circles back around to competition. Suddenly, Dawn offers up. My philosophy in competition is, don't beat your opponent, beat who you were yesterday. Huh. That's a pretty good philosophy, sure. It's what Cynthia said to me after she beat me. Oh. Kinda takes on a different tone knowing it came from her, then. Yeah, a little bit. I don't think she's ever had to deal with not beating an opponent. I wonder. Anyway, I try to follow that philosophy, but it's hard. I actually get kind of competitive. Oh, I know. I've battled you. 
I hope one day it's as easy for me to beat myself as it was for Cynthia. Well, I'll be there to push you forward until that day. Of course, that doesn't mean you're going to be beating me. We'll see. Why did I feel a shiver run down my spine? What were you trying to convince me of before? Wait, are you thinking... No! Well, maybe I... I want to know what it is first, of course. Great, uh, it's an art exhibition that Cobacon holds near the end of the year for their more artistic students. I think there are prizes, but it's pretty low stakes sort of thing. And I talked with the ice instructor. She said the ice exhibits have been shown before, and there are cooling glass cupboards we can display them in. <clears throat> Seems like a great idea, right? I guess. Why do you want me to show them off, though? Your muscles won't be that big when I'm done, you know? Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> it's not about me. Honestly, I think the Altaria is way more impressive. No, I, I just think that such awesome sculptures should be seen by other people. You're very nice. Come on, I can't be the only person that says your statues are awesome, right? My mom never has. Okay, friends then. There were three people in my age in Snowpoint. Uh, there were three people my age in Snowpoint. Wait, wasn't it a city? In the technical sense, most families moved away if they had kids, though. Especially during winter, it would get so cold that your windows would crack. I heard something the other day uh, in the UK. The only definition for whether something is a town or a city is if it has a cathedral. So, somewhere as massive as, like, Snowpoint could technically be a... Well, somewhere like as tiny as Snowpoint could technically be a city if it just has a cathedral. For example, like, uh, the place I'm from, a city in, in the UK called Birmingham, uh, it's massive. It's, like, the second biggest city in the UK, but it's only a city because it has a cathedral whereas there are places like uh where I'm... I, can't, I can't remember off the top of my head but there are places in the uk that are massive but don't have a cathedral so they don't count as cities it's a weird one. Oh, uh, i didn't mind that though it just got lonely sometimes so you really didn't have any friends there was one girl I spent a lot of time with. Her name was Mindy. She was not the best person in retrospect, but she never tried to stop me from doing what I was doing, and she never tried to get me to do anything else, so I hung out with her all the time, actually. Yeah, I know Mindy! That motherfucking Medicham trade! What do you mean she wasn't the best person? Did she do something wrong? She did a lot wrong! Nothing specifically, but... Every time I did something, no matter what it was, she'd make fun of me and criticize even the smallest things for no reason. I think she was just bored. But everyone in Snowpoint was bored. I don't think that was really fair of her. And she'd always pull pranks by having her ghastly jump out at people to scare them, and then they'd fall in the snow and get all wet. And she did this to other people too, not just me, in case it sounded like she was only bullying me. She wasn't. Jeez, I'm sorry, that sounds grossly unfair. Yeah, she called herself my rival in coordinating, but she didn't do what rivals are supposed to do. We're rivals, right? Of course. So we push each other forward. But Mindy just dragged me back, and... Well, that's what my mom said when she banned Mindy from ever seeing me again. How did you feel about that? I... don't know. I think it might have been for the best, but... After that, I was so lonely. I didn't have anyone to talk to about anything except Pokemon. It was the only thing anyone had in common. I guess after that, I might have started resenting Pokemon a little bit, since I had to talk about them if I wanted to talk about anything with anyone ever. Huh. So it seems like more than anything, Dawn doesn't like being forced to do something. At least I could talk about sculpture, fashion, and theater with Mindy even if she insulted my taste every time we talked. I can get how there would be some conflicting emotions there. But hey, I'm here now, and uh, I don't know anything about the stuff that interests you, but I mean, I can learn. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. You're a really fantastic rival. Don't mention it. I'm not even trying. Okay, I'm not promising anything, but this exhibition you mentioned, uh, when is it? 
February 19th. Okay, again, I'm not promising anything, but I... Dang it! <laughs> what did she do? What did she say? Did I... I'm not pro I'm not anything promising. God damn it! Even my brain skips over that. I'm not anything promising, but I... <laughs> oh, dang it! <laughs> you used to look really embarrassed whenever you did that. Now you just seem annoyed. Progress? I'd call it that. It may just be inches, but it's progress. You know, I have some more time. Maybe I'll pull that sculpture out and see about shaving off a bit of the uh, extra muscle. Alright, but let's take a picture of it first. I want to hang that up in my future weights room. Something to work towards, you know? No. Nobody likes that kind of body. That's just, like, gross. Flobblash is giving me the, the Dawn for Everals. Uh, Bombus Serena gave me Rhyhorn's Sand Island Litten. Yellow is overjoyed. Hell yeah. I'll be honest, I don't fully understand how the Everals, like, are determined to be given out. So, like, I've just done a scene with Dawn, but I got Serena's for referrals. It's a weird one. I don't get it. Uh, maybe I'll get it in future. If anyone understands it, please explain to me in the comments. You finish up your business early and head to the Dawn. Hey, guys. Hey, man. Hi. How was your day? Pretty good. Melody didn't do anything crazy in class today. An old man Oak seems like he's really trying to turn things around. Man, I know he's your friend, but I don't know how you could live with him as a teacher. Pretty sure hearing him lecture made me stupider. It's clear he's very passionate about what interests him. It's just unfortunate that there wasn't much overlap between what was on the tests and what he taught us. Yeah, it was bad enough for one week, but you've had him for like eight weeks, right? I'd request a transfer if I were you. There was a spot in Chris's class between Yellow and I. He's my friend. I don't leave friends behind, no matter how badly they're doing. Anyone could be brilliant with enough time and support. Even my 65-year-old teacher. We got you. Even this little guy! Even my tubby Pikachu, who only showed an actual interest in battling a month ago. Yeah, you're right. Well, uh, would you like to play a game? It's a while before curfew. I was actually hoping we could talk. It's what we're best at. See, Blue told me that you guys had a bit of a disagreement. Man, did Blue seriously ask you to patch things up between us and him? Um, I'm sorry, Alex. I know your heart's in the right place, but this doesn't really have anything to do with you. At least hear me out. He told me that he had a serious conversation with you, Ethan. Like, a really meaningful one. That's a matter of opinion. And then he said that his Eevee threw up the Forever Rolls and you guys just thought he was faking the connection to get the stones. Are you saying that's not what happened? <sighs> Old Van Oak and I don't really understand how the power works yet, but I don't think that should even be possible. I think the fact the stone showed up means he really did have a connection with you. A connection that meant something to him. At least that's how it worked for Flobodosh and I. Okay. Cool. I believe you. See, Blue? What did I say? Told you it was that easy. Doesn't mean I'm not still mad at him, though. Oh. I mean... Okay. Fair. B but why? Come on. He stomps around the dorm like he's trying to shake the pictures off the walls below us. Uh, he stomps around this dorm like he's trying to shake the pictures off of the walls of the room below us. I've always been the guy who defends him whenever you say something bad about him, but he doesn't bother to remember my name half the time. He makes me feel like that party member that's mandatory in a bunch of story segments, but no one actually wants to use. But I mean, that's just me whining. You've seen how he treats Yellow, right? Go on, Yell. Tell him. <laughs> I've given him so much of my time and energy, and all I want is a little thanks, but he'll never give me that. Not even a kind smile or a warm hand. I don't want to keep going through this cycle of him taking me for granted, then I get mad at him, then he does something big to make up for it, then I forgive him, then he takes me for granted again. I don't want to be saved. I just want to be safe. So, like, sure. Maybe we were wrong about this one time, but can you blame us for assuming the worst? No, I, I didn't assume the worst. I, I wanted to believe him. I really did. I was just too tired. 
I know, Yell. Sorry. Shouldn't have spoken for you. But yeah, no, I absolutely assume the worst. And you can't really blame me for that? After everything Blue's given us to work with. I was waiting for him to... to talk with us, but he never came. He hasn't said a word to me in four days. And then he sends you to sort this out for him? Honestly, the more I think about this, the more pissed off I get. Like he's trying to use your friendship power to ignore the problem. If I was you, I'd be pissed too. I honestly hadn't thought of it like that, but come to think of it, yeah. Yeah. He is trying to use me, isn't he? Why shouldn't I be pissed? He can solve his own problems. I've had enough problems with people hating me for my power. I don't want the people who don't hate me for it to use it. You know what? Actually, I'm sorry. Huh? I'm sorry. Here I go again. What are you sorry for, Blue? I'm sorry for taking you for granted. But I promise. Don't, Blue. Don't promise. I don't need grand gestures. I don't need oaths. I don't need vows. I just need... <sighs> I... will try harder. I, uh... I do appreciate you. And, uh... I mean it this time. Thank you. Now it's Ethan's turn. I'm sorry to you too. I wasn't trying to get the stones. Until... Until I did. Uh, I didn't think I could ever get... I didn't think I could ever get you enough to even get the stones anyway. But I do get you. More than I did anyway, and since I get you, I get why you'd be mad, which is, uh... Fair. But I do remember your name. Even if I sometimes call you you or whatever. Fine. Huh? Is that it? I don't know what you want me to say, man. I've only known you for two months, and... You've been a massive P... P-I-T-A. Pain in the ass. Yeah. You've been a massive P-I-T-A for both of them. I defended you because I'm a contrarian, not because I actually disagreed with anything anyone was saying. You're not turning me in around in a single conversation. That's fair. Wait. Oh, this is great. I got it. Here, take this. Wait. Are those... Yeah. For Everals. I'm never going to be able to pay for this school, am I? This power? Dude, you're just giving them to us? They only work on Pichu. And it's not like I'm going to use one of those electric rats you three use. Okay. Uh, how do we give them to our Pokemon? You just kind of push them on. They kind of sink into the Pokemon, like one of those stick-on gems you buy at craft stores. This doesn't hurt the Pokemon? No. The Pokémon can just release them whenever they want. You don't look enthused. Well, as I may have mentioned once or twice, I'm completely broke. I was hoping that I could sell these Forever Alls to champions to pay for my tuition, which becomes harder if someone's giving them away for free. Jeez, I sound like Gardenia. Relax, it's only two more. You really think I'm gonna hand these out to anyone else? No, but I'm still worried. So, I hate to admit this, but giving me a shiny one-of-a-kind Pokemon Enhancing Gem has kind of helped patch things over. Of course, I don't know what it does yet. If it's something lame, like making my Pichu turn normal type or whatever, I'll be pretty pissed. Ha! Huh. I guarantee it won't be. My Foreverals are way better than whatever trash Alex generates. I mean, the champions won't even want to buy them from him when they see what I can do. Don't even joke about that. Come on. Let's go to the gym. It's late enough, it should be mostly empty. And we won't have to run back from the battle hall when curfew gets too close. I'm game. Amarillo? Mmm... Of course. Uh, I'd better see some concerted improvement from you, Mr. Blue Oak. If I don't... You're in trouble. A lot of trouble. <sighs> Alright. Pichu equipped. Let's see what this rock does. Blue, I'll battle you. Please go easy on me. Ha! I... Uh... Yeah. We'll go easy on you. Huh. Ugh! 
My heart, man. My, I really like Blue in this game. He's just like top tier character. The fact that he starts off as an arsehole, but then you start to see the cracks and start to see his logical thinking, you just start to kind of understand him. I think he's one of the... Right, I don't want to blow too much smoke up Freud's ass, but like, I do genuinely think that this version of Blue is probably the best written like version of any Pokemon character in a main series game. I can't think of many better than this. The only thing I can think of that even compares like character and writing wise is potentially someone like N or potentially Lusamine, Lillian and the Gen 7 lot. But I'm... The writing in this is just like... If Pokemon's writing in general is like a 5 out of 10, this is like an 8. It's not even in the same ballpark. The fact that there is such a community around this game just shows how good the writing is. I guess we're paired then. Oh yeah, what kind of battle are you thinking? Oh, I get to choose. Singles, chum, doubles, buddy. Triples, confidant. I'm gonna go doubles, uh, because that means I can get two Pokemon out on the field. Also, I'm gonna take this item off of, uh, item, item swap. What? Uh, oh, cool. I still don't fully get the UI. Uh, what we're gonna do, We've still got the wide, yeah, we've still got the wide guard Pikachu. Uh, Pikachu's level cap is below, so yeah, we'll do this. We'll go borrow Flobodosh and see how that works. Yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. Doubles. Sounds good to me. Let me just rearrange my team. All right, ready. Let's go. All right, Pichu, we just got a new power up. Let's see what it does. Hey, is it just me, or does Pichu look a bit tougher than before? Pichu, Everall. Base that scale based on the dest on destined defeats by the opponent. Its power is imperfect. Ah, oh, it gets the Pikachu and Eevee, the, the let's go move. Zippy Zap, Zippy Zap, by the way, I think it's such a cool idea for a move. It'd be so good on like the bulkier, slower electric types like Luxray. That'd be sick on it. But yeah, I like these, these moves. Okay, uh... I think I'm gonna... Double target into Pichu. And power up punch the Absol. Yeah, Pichu's down. Didn't get to do anything. And his own comp face here. Man, figures. Ah, well. Don't know what I was expecting. We got a power up, not an I win button. Anyway, this fight isn't done until one of us is out of lives. And it looks to me like I've got some left. Can't face Perif- Okay, nice. Let's see if we can get a, a KO here. Bite onto Absol. Power Punch onto Absol. Ah, uh, Flobodosh doesn't get to attack. That's irritating. Oh, wow. Let's go, Barrow. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna bite. No, I'm not. I'm switching out. No, I can't switch out yet. I'm gonna win Shroud and I'm gonna power up punch onto Absol. Oh, Absol also used it. That's irritating. Alright. Well, I'm swapping out here because I want that Confei to go down. Uh, we'll go into Aurora and we'll go out into Shigari. Yeah. Jane kiss onto Chiggery, bites. Cool face down, Absol's down. Chiggery leveled up, nice. And his own Chiggery's here. <laughs> this is like a weird mirror match. Okay, uh, let's get rid of that. And let's go for double team. Nice, get that out of the way. And the Phalanx is here. I'm going to Dazzling Gleam, and I'm going to switch Chiggery out, because I'm trying to use this as a way to get my, my levels higher. So we're going to go out into Flobodosh. Cool. Uh, Dazzling Gleam again. And Wide Guard? Yeah. Nice. There we go. Wide Guard is busted in doubles and triples, I guess. 
Uh, Flobodosh is still level 23. And I think Aurora can get to level 24. So we'll Aura Beam. Uh, oh, no, we won't Aura Beam. What am I doing? Uh, Dazzling Gleam. And Nuzzle. Ugh. Okay, this should finish it, though. Dazzling Gleam. Nuzzle. Yeah, easy. Flobodosh didn't level up, though. Damn it, we need some more EXP. How are we looking? Uh... Need 442, 482. Okay, now is the time we just need to do a bunch of training, I guess. Nice going. I guess I gotta spend some time grinding before I'm hitting your numbers. It's just practice. That wasn't bad for your first time using Forever Rolls. Yes, it was. You got to do nothing. But I feel like, actually, Pikachu got a little. Uh, Pichu got a little stronger, didn't she? I mean, compared to how she was before the battle. You're her trainer. You tell me. Yeah, I think that's it. Kind of funny that Blue ended up giving us Forever Rolls before you, huh? Wait, did you not think of that? Let's talk about something else. Anyway, Yellow, what's up with your Forever Roll? What does that one do? Same thing? Um, we couldn't get it to trigger. Huh? I've never had problems triggering Forever Rolls before. Yeah, and I didn't have any problems just now either. The stone just won't... it won't stick to Choo Choo. Oh, that's... weird. True to Yellow's word, when she presses the Forever Roll to Choo Choo, it refuses to make any sort of connection. Choo! Well, I'm stumped. Maybe Choo Choo's too weak to handle it? You train my Pokémon, Blue. Isn't it the same training you've given your Eevee? Ha! <laughs> I train my Pokémon, and leave Stratini, by putting them through the grinder, sending them up against massive amounts of foes and pushing them to our absolute limit. I train your Pokémon by giving them softball opponents that they're never in any actual danger from. What? Why? Wait, you didn't know? I thought you didn't want your Pokémon to evolve. That kind of training is ideal for building up a Pokémon's energy without causing them to want to evolve. It's called soft hand training. Normally, people who want to train their Pokémon for fun, but only to keep them as pets, use it. Oh, well, yes, uh, that, that's correct. If you do want your Pokémon to evolve, just let me know. I, I can do that too. Maybe Evolution would make your re Choo Choo uh, strong enough to handle that forever. We can ask your grandfather about it. He might have some theories. Yeah. That's interesting, though. Yellow doesn't want a Pokémon to evolve? Why would that be? Alright, I don't know about you guys, but I'm bushed. It's almost curfew after all, so let's get back to the dorm ASAP. Right with you. Hmm. Yes! <laughs> He's happy to have his friends back. I should take some before bed. You feel restless for some reason, as though there's a scratching under your skin. Unable to focus on texting anyone, you decide to go to sleep. What? Halfway across campus, there is someone else who feels the same way. You are no longer you. What's going on? But you have not been you for a while. Purloin, Pidov, Herdia, Carvana. What's in our bag? Paper with Alex's face. Spare tie clip music player to do list. 7 out of 59. Tape roll, broken, gl broken glasses. 7 spare pens. And he's got nothing else. <laughs> Give to Purloin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take that back, I'll take that back. Don't get- no, 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 no. Which you have not been you for a while. Uh, oh, it's Sharen. I'm so tired. Why can't I sleep? I called Dad. He's probably still up riding anyway. Mm -hmm. Hey, kiddo. I haven't heard from you in a while. 
Hey, what's this? I can't see you, kiddo. I fell. My phone broke a little bit. Well, all right then, kiddo. Just let me know if you need a replacement. All right. I hope I didn't wake you up. Not a chance. You know your old man. I've been working on this massive article, an expose on the construction of the PWT. You'd never believe what those drit fail contractors are doing. Get this, they're actually hiring illegal immigrants on purpose, so they can blackmail them and force them to work for lower wagers. That is kinda what the FIFA World Cup in Qatar did. Which is horrendous. Well, I won't stand for it. I don't care how many billions are saving. No amount of money is worth the price of human dignity. As soon as I publish their article, their whole operation will crack like an egg. I tell you, kiddo, this article will be bigger than the Bronius interview. Stay safe. An article like that will make you enemies. Ha, kiddo, way too late for that one. I was running away from corporate thugs with sock on their belts since I was younger than you. And you know what? I do the whole thing again. Ha, 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 ha. Hey. Shiren, what's up? You're all quiet. I'm just tired. Come on, kiddo. I'm a journalist. I find truth. Besides that, you're my son. I know when you're upset. It's a deeper tiredness. Today was exhausting. Oh, yeah? Well, tell me about it. Okay. Oh. Poor Shiren. I wonder why yesterday was so tiring for him. This is why. <laughs> Alright, how long have we been going for? Hour and six? Yeah, we got a bit longer. Good morning, you two. I trust your patrols were uneventful. Damage report? All clear skies and smooth seas, Captain. Someone said fire to a dumpster. Melody made two different girls cry, and one guy. Men and Bray and Me uh, Brendan and May were caught in the janitor's closet again. On the faculty side of things, Seabold and Katie are fighting. Since they can't agree on what to cook, they're demanding a doubled kitchen budget to make two meals a day. All clear skies and smooth seas, Captain! Oh, and someone made an effigy of young you and hung it in the auditorium. Oh, that's a new one. Was it you? Well, I didn't stop them. Ah, we have fun. <laughs> Well, I suppose I'd better resolve some of these issues. Hey! And good morning again, Gardenia. No, no one said business. Uh, that, that's not it. I finally have it. Undeniable proof that this school is haunted. We've talked about this. There's no such thing as ghosts. And your nagging that the disciplinary committee dropped the important work we're doing to chase phantoms continues to grate on our limited time and patience. Important work? That's a laugh. I didn't sign up with you to actually do disciplinary committee work. And even I feel annoyed about how little we actually do. We totally do important work. Just yesterday, we helped find a student's last Pokeball, remember? We spent all day on that. A single Pokeball? They cost like 200 Poke Dollars. That's what I said. It didn't even have a Pokemon in it. We are getting off topic. Gardenia, we will not be participating in your ghost hunt. Please take this request to the Occult Club. I told you, that won't work! Only people who don't believe in ghosts can get rid of them. The Occult Club is full of believers. And I suppose the instant we find these ghosts, we'd be helpless to exorcise them? Presumably, finding them would make it quite clear that they are, in fact, real. Just seeing isn't believing. Like how you can see Alex isn't evil, but can't believe it. That stubbornness, that refusal to believe, is what's needed to really get rid of a ghost. If you won't leave, then I will. I have real work to do. Stop being so stubborn! Ha! <laughs> Every time you tell me about those two, they crack me up. Silver and Skyla, right? I'm pretty sure I know Skyla's dad. Never heard of this Silver guy, but if he's Jiltonian, he's off my beat. They tolerate me, which is more than can be said about most people. I'd be careful about that Gardenia girl, though. I get a dangerous vibe from her. I feel like she knows exactly what she wants, and she's not gonna take no for an answer. You're very right. Anyway, later in the day... There's a cool little story mission going on here. This is really cool. Come in. Oh, dear. Yo, Dickless. My name is Sharen. Of course it is. 
So, third time today, right? Do I get a prize? No. You're boring me. I am not here to entertain. You are here to think on what you've done wrong in silence. Uh-huh. Because I'm pretty sure ex-champion Wallace sent me here expecting you to punish me. But you can't do that, can you? I will elevate this incident to the student council, as I have been instructed to do in matters concerning you. You write a note on a piece of paper, placing it on the stack next to you. The stack that is already quite large. So, Dickless. You know, if I'm gonna be here so often, you could at least put up a beanbag in here. Maybe hook a Wii up on that wall there? Do you do Mario Party? Mario Party co-op? No, no, of course you don't. Because that would require friends. And a dick. You don't need a dick to play Mario Party. <laughs> what the f- That's just like typical bully writing though. It doesn't matter what they say. Like, it doesn't matter if what they say makes sense or not, as long as they say it with the conviction that, like, makes it feel like it's an insult. <laughs> I'd almost prefer it if it were Alex that kept getting sent here. That Melody, what a piece of work. You said she was Lawrence Phobos' niece? Odd. I don't recall him having any siblings, but that guy's a real piece of work, too. A co-worker wrote an arc- uh, A co-worker wrote an article about an alleged illegal axe happening in Phobos' mansion. The Phobosphere. What a tacky name. And he lost his job the next day. I'm not calling that a coincidence. Anyway, what happened next? Ow. I'm getting very uncomfortable sat here. This heat is just sapping me. Come in. Oh, you two. What? Oh. Was it the janitor's closet again? Empty classroom. Well, we thought it was empty. You're putting me in an exceedingly awkward position. Obviously, a little physical affection between consenting adults is not exactly something I wish to punish. But at this point, you've been warned to tone it down so many times, it truly feels like a direct rebellion. I... I swear it wasn't, man. It's just, when we're together, I mean... Come on. We just love each other so much, Sharen. You must love someone that much too, right? Surely you understand. I do. But I simply cannot let you off with a warning this time. You've had enough chances. Great job keeping the school safe from seeing a healthy relationship, Shireen. Thank goodness you're here to save us from that. I mean... He's not wrong there. He's been lenient with you and said, look, just tone it down. And you've just ignored him. I do kind of feel bad for him there. And I don't like Shireen. You scribble a note and add it to the pile on your desk. The pile bulges and seems as though it's about to topple. The note you added just slides off the top into the trash can next to your desk. You pretend not to notice. I really do understand. Brendan, May, I understand more than you ever could. Ha <laughs> ha! College PDA! Classic, kiddo! Hey, you aren't getting into anything you shouldn't, are you? But if you are, well, college is the time for it. Just remember to wear protection. Ah, uh, you probably don't want to hear your old man saying that, huh? <laughs> My bad. How about the rest of your day? And then in the evening. Alright, I put this off long enough. I need to do this now. Sabrina, I... You wish to apologize. Yes. I truly... You truly never meant any harm to anyone except Alex, and even then, you only wanted to bring him down to everyone else's level. But your passion got the better of you, and you saw how dire the situation was when the school was invaded. You believed drastic measures were necessary. You feared meeting with him one-on-one -on -one and accusing him directly, as if he was morally bankrupt, as you feared he may remove your ability to tell others. You left your allies without oversight, believing that they would simply talk to other students and gain compromising information, as you had done. You never meant for me to hurt. I know. I've had to hear you rehearsing this speech in your head for weeks, over and over, just waiting for you to finally say the words. I... my intentions were only ever good. I know. And because I cannot help but know your intentions, you feel entitled to my empathy. You will not get it. 
Take nothing but my scorn. Take it, leave with it, and stay gone. As you wish. That is poignant as fuck. That kind of reminds me of a scene from Bojack Horseman. Bojack goes to... Uh, What's-his-face's house. Uh, I can't remember. The director bloke that got him the job on Horse and Around. And apologizes. And the guy says, I don't forgive you. I didn't need... You know, he says, I don't forgive you. You're not entitled to my apology. It's only because you want to feel better. Now get the fuck out of my house. Yeah, I feel it. Are you alright, kiddo? No, he's not alright. Finally, almost time to go back to the dorm. Where I can be surrounded by people who may hate me, but at least don't talk to me. Huh? Who is it? Uh, the disciplinary committee is closed for today. Yo! Shiren. Ugh. Thank goodness it's just you. I thought it was a late night complaint, or... You don't look happy. I'm not, Shiren. That pile of reports you gave us this afternoon. Why wasn't Brendan and May's PDA reported there? What? We know they were caught. Uh, we know they were caught and reported here as instructed. Brendan told us later to apologize for giving us more work, but we didn't have any work because we were never told. No good deed goes unpunished. It's a foolish rule, a relic of Kobakan's past. We're not children. This is not high school. Brendan and May did nothing wrong. I mean, they did. Well, well. Obviously, I've done all that. If they were in the janitor's closet doing things, then yeah, they they did because that's illegal. But it depends on what they were doing. That is not for you to decide. You had your chance to change the law when you were running for student council. You now exist to serve the law, not debate it. Roxanne will tell Drayden about this. I imagine he'll have words for you. Remember, you are a member of the disciplinary committee as punishment. This is not justice. Justice is ephemeral. A convenient spirit that means only what the speaker says. What we want, concretely, is a school where the student council can rely on the disciplinary committee to follow the established rules laid out until such a time that they're changed. Justice is a ghost. Do what you said you would do. Stop chasing ghosts. Damn. No rest for the wicked, eh? There are bad days, kiddo. There will always be bad days. Things will turn around. I hope you're right. But what if I don't deserve for them to turn around? What if this, forever, is what I deserve? I can't believe that. It's easy to give up. Every time I bust out the typewriter, I have to consider if I'm okay ruining my life over what I'm about to write. And people have promised all sorts of things in retaliation. If I had a nickel for every time someone said I'd regret this, I could have sent you to Kobacon twice. And you know what? Sometimes I did. Sometimes I did regret it. But even when I thought I'd done something wrong, I knew I meant to do the right thing. That's all anyone can do. Besides, call it my bias, but I don't think you did anything wrong. I hurt hundreds of innocent people. I... I may have only managed to expose a single person who actually deserved it. Kid, you're my boy, Shiren. From the first moment I held you in my arms, I knew I would love, trust, and believe in you, no matter who or what you became. My only fear when you left Unova was that you'd come back thinking you had to be like them to win. And everything you're telling me tells me that you're as far from that as you ever were. Dad. Keep your head up, kiddo. And call me more often. I miss you. It's lonely here without you. Remember, kid. Even when your mom left us, I knew I'd done the right thing. If I can still hold my head high and believe in justice after that... You can too. Maybe justice is a ghost. But is there really anything wrong with chasing ghosts? Love ya. It seems that positively affecting reality absolutely eludes me. Perhaps it is only in fiction then that my influence can be found. 
Fine. Remind me, what was that poem you held so much stock in, the cause of these early morning interruptions? Gardenia. Ooh. In hallowed halls, old with wear, shadows call to those who dare. One living ghost in mortal shell, one changed ghost back from hell. One dead ghost here, furthermore, two unfed ghosts once adored. By day they eyed, by night they roam, haunted spectres far from home. Disaster comes with undrawn breath, if not freed, naught else comes but death. As the enemy forces gather in the night, the banner of liberation flies higher, readying for the fight. Your resolve resonates through Flobberdosh. Flobberdosh's liberation limit increased by 20. Fuck! That was cool! That was really cool! I appreciate that scene. That was really interesting. That was really interesting. Hmm. There's something going on here. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is where we're going to end this episode. So thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed yourselves just as much as I have enjoyed recording that episode. And, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back here again tomorrow for yet another episode of Pokemon Academy Life Forever. So, without further ado, that'll be all for today. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> I told you I'm keeping it. <laughs>